Welcome to Unlocking Levels, helping you reach new levels of your potential. What's good, y'all? It's your boy CL The Source back with another episode of Unlocking Levels. And if you're watching the video version of this podcast episode, you can see I got a very esteemed special guest with me, my guy Trev Smooth. This man, for a little bit of a background and, 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 and more context on how we know each other, man, we've been in co- uh, connection for over two years now. We just we just uh, got clear on that, man. I had to go search back in the archives and look at when we first connected, man. And, uh, you know, this dude's energy just really um, attracted me because, I mean, he speaks on a lot of the same things that I, I align with, man. You know, uh, he coins it and we'll get into it as this um, discussion evolves and, and progresses. But he coins it human improvement. Is is that is that the, uh, is what what you coined it, Trev? Big Trev? Yes, sir. Uh, one of the main reasons for me doing what I'm doing is for the sake of human improvement. Right? There's a lot of men, especially that I can help, and women as well. You'd be surprised. Yeah. Um, sometimes with the I dug into my analytics, and although there are more male patrons. Uh, as far as YouTube is concerned, I have more watch hours from women. So that kind of made me change my tone a bit. Right. Um, and it, it actually helped make me grow because in all honesty, I'm like that. If they're watching this content, I want anybody who's going to support my content to be able to get something out of it. So I took it a little easy. Um, it's a lot less red pill undertones <laughs> because at the end of the day right it's not about we want men to rule or whatever we want masculinity to still exist and we want everyone to be able to function as a society right and i feel like right now the way things are um women's empowerment is great feminism the original version of feminism is great but this perversion of feminism we have right now to where it's at the point where it's at the detriment of men doesn't work it doesn't make men happy and it doesn't make women happy either so what i want us to be able to do is have that balance where we can be in harmony and both parties are happy and no one feels like they are being strained right and it's not just when we get together we also have to build ourselves as individuals i don't feel like we build ourselves enough as individuals so if you're not ready as an individual you coming together with someone else who also may not be ready as an individual or even if they are they won't have the patience to be able to tolerate that so unless both people coming to this uh relationship together are both prepared then there's no way we're going to be able to work in harmony because it's going to be too much of a strain on both of us bro you you said the perfect word right there harmony man i think that there's been so much division there's been so much rhetoric that has been kind of circulating for so long now that just tries to tear um people apart you know uh and harmony we we need to get back to that man because the divine feminine and the sacred masculine man we belong together you know we're more powerful together and we can be more effective and more uh productive in in so many ways that can make our whole existence as human beings better and, and create a better space and world for all of us man so what you said is is so spot on bro that's why i'm so excited to have you on this bro because you know uh as i said from a distance i've been keeping a keeping a watchful eye on what you've been doing man you know what i'm saying you've stepped up your stuff so much man i mean just look at the studio you're in bro like the tones that you in and like the content that you put it put out is so valuable bro because uh in today's society man and i don't know if you feel the same way i'm pretty sure you do and you tell me if you do feel the same way or not but it feels like man we, we've been getting such a bad rap it's like We've been getting pushed to the side, bro. Masculinity has become sort of a a, a buzzword for people, and it, and it just kind of like it's getting demonized. You know what I'm saying? Like we like it's wrong to be a man for us to have these natural kind of um, 
ways of living as a man, bro. Like it's, we've been put being pushed aside. It feels like man. And, uh, I for one can't stand it. And, uh, it ain't going it ain't going to sway me one way or the other i'm gonna be me regardless but i'm also be the best me man and also be open on ways to improve and you know it's it's it feels like the time now more so than ever for for people like us to to just try to pour into others to help them be better because that's the path i'm on that's the path i know you're on bro like you focus on self development every day we were talking off camera I mean, even simple things of, of what you're consuming, that beverage you got right now, man. We were having a brief discussion on, you know, just just uh, the benefits of drinking carbonated uh, water, right? And you, you squeeze some lemon in there. I was even going to ask you, man. I mean, we can we can dive, you know, digress a little bit here, but do you know the, some of the benefits of adding Himalayan salt to some of that too, bro? Like, because I, I did a little research on that. No, man. but I'm I'm, cer I'm certainly open. I'm certainly open to hear that. <laughs> I'm yeah, certainly open yeah. to hear that. Bro, we can have a whole conversation on, on superfoods and, and creating your own concoctions on how you can, you know, make your energy better, make make your energy cleaner, and you can do it in such natural ways, you know, versus just drinking five cups of coffee or all these, you know, artificial sodas and things that are just actually <laughs> killing your body, right? But that's a whole separate thing. Yeah, Going that is, that is. Original kind of topic at hand. Do you feel- Oh, yeah, no, I'm, 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 so check it out. Here's how I feel about that. And I know you mentioned buzz terms. Uh, one of the biggest buzz terms, aside from uh, men being called sassy now in 2024, um, is toxic masculinity, right? I made an entire video on that where I discussed how I felt about what toxic masculinity is. And for them to attach toxic to masculinity is almost like they're trying to make a, a, a synonym like masculinity is toxic, right? And I understand that we don't want to be hyper-masculine to the point where it's just exaggerated. But of course, my favorite word, balance. There's a balance, right? And a man who actually behaves masculine, all he wants to do is to prevent, protect, right? Um, a lot of people don't say this this one they they talk about the protect and provide but um i think what we do most is problem solve whatever that looks like we problem solve so if you're dealing with issues um even if it's emotionally a masculine man will be able to help you get through that that's what we want to do we want to protect you in every way we understand that females uh most important quality that they're looking for in a man is security um, and that could be financial security. That could be physical security, emotional security. Those are the things that they look for. And a lot of us as men, uh, sometimes we do struggle with that just for the simple fact that we weren't equipped with that off rip. Uh, we have a good 80% of us being raised by one parent, right? And usually it's not a positive male role model in their lives. So if with that, when you take that into consideration, it's like that's your foundation. If you didn't have people to pull your coat and say, look, this is how to, this is how things go. This is how you deal with females. This is how you uh, prepare yourself for work. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, we, we were just talking about how to put the positive things into your body, right? Learning that balance of diet, learning that balance of exercise, learning that discipline. We don't have the discipline. Um, there's so many of us right now that are content with playing video games all day or just being on social media all day just scrolling through your hour count is if your hour count is more than an hour on social media a day then you're gonna have problems um especially the way that the algorithms are designed uh it's very easy to adapt an ideology based on what you see because you got that confirmation bias right so once they see that you like a particular piece of content then they're going to continue to push that to back to the point where it's creating conspiracy theories, right? So um, you can easily be a Democrat and become a Republican within like two weeks based on the material that you're constantly fed because people come up with these ways to uh, suck you in and really give you an idea and then they support that idea and they continue to bombard you with that same type of content so what i encourage people to do sometimes is to 
not just look at one side of things. You have to be open minded. You have to seek it because they're not going to force feed you that they're going to force feed you what they think you're going to watch. And unfortunately, it gives us these really horrible ideas and messages spread so fast right now. Um, we have to look out for how like the children even when they see something, how are they going to process it? We're not there to tell them everything they get there. It's not like they come home, watch TV like back in the day and we see the news and we can give them that context that they need. A lot of times the parents might still be at work, they're home and they have their phones all day, which is going to give them a bunch of information without the context. So you have to be proactive about it just to find out what it is your children are interested in. And you have to give them that context and not, that's that's another thing. I don't want to keep going on because I don't want to stop waiting questions. But yeah, that's it's so much with that, man. Like you just have to be careful what you're consuming. I think social media has really uh, hurt masculinity just because of the idea that they gave it now. 100 percent, man. Couldn't agree more. And, you know, I think for the most part, I want to believe that uh, social media, the Internet, these things are are, are neutral. It's it's kind of the, the people, the engine behind it that can kind of, you know, take it off balance. Right. And, and, and mm -hmm. pump what it is you're looking for. It's kind of like you're right, man. The algorithm just it identifies, you know, some of the tendencies, what you like. And it's only going to, you know, continue to feed you what you like. Right. So um, and, and what can happen and that that can be dangerous because what happens is it creates mm -hmm. like echo chamber. Right. Like you kind of yep. end up just consuming a bunch of stuff that just uh, further validates and, and, and provides more evidence on what you are starting to believe. And it can, and right now in today's day and age, specifically with the political climate and, and the uh, election right around the corner, are oh, they turning the heat up on us, man? They turning the heat up on us. Yeah. And, and Oh man. And not to mention AI, bro. It's so hard to discern what. Yeah. <laughs> you can't tell anymore you can't even tell anymore man and it's a uh, it can be very dangerous if you're if you're not if your mind is hasn't been crafted to uh to to kind of understanding that bro or just having that that independent way of thinking of being able to kind of um look at things from a different perspective and like you said just be open to kind of seeing things from from a different lens you know what i'm saying and man it's important to do that because you can get just so lost in the sauce out here. I, hey, I myself personally get caught up in the in the world with myself sometimes too. But then, if it wasn't for the inner work that I've been doing, where I've just been able to catch myself a, a little bit sooner, I could get swept up just like the next man. You know what I'm saying? And it, it, you know, I think uh, all of us, whether you're a man or a woman, we we all have emotions. It's part of the human experience. We all have emotions. And uh, if you if you don't control your emotions, man, or if you don't learn how to manage your emotions, it can get the best of you. It can lead you down some some very tricky places, man. You can end up somewhere where you're just like, how the hell did I end up here? You know what I'm saying? So you got to be intentional with with how you're using these, these devices, because just the, the, the way that we're describing it to be how it's used right now, we can also use it like we're using it right now to try to pour into people, try to help people use it as a tool to connect with people, build relationships with people, teach people, learn from people. Like I use it and I'm sure you use it too. YouTube University has taught me so much, bro, where I've, I've learned how to, how to, how to uh, add new skill sets to my bag, bro. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I've learned all these different ideologies that like align with some of the things that uh that i align with but also i've learned some things that i don't want to be aligned with you know what i'm saying and you see a little bit of everything but it takes that discernment from the individual's part to be able to uh differentiate what what's what you know what i'm saying so all i'm saying is be careful out there young man young woman anybody out there because you could easily get lost in the sauce bro what are your thoughts on that uh, yeah so you just have to be careful what it is that you're consuming. Uh, one of the things that I did also want to mention is you have to be careful the friends that you choose Ooh. even online. Because if you notice right now, they suggest content to you that your friends watch. So if you notice a lot of things that come up on your timeline, your friends 
have already liked it. And they'll show you which friends have liked it. They even took it a step uh, further within the last week or so where you could see the person at top who shared it and all. So it's like they're getting um, and, and they're using all of that to just make money. Right. Um, what people have to understand is that there's really no privacy. Right. Um, unless you really, really, really are technical and you know how to turn all of those things off. There's ways of doing that. I might even do a, um, a video on how to do that. But they're so intrusive. If you just understand, like you just talking about certain things and it pops up on your timeline. Right. Sneakers that you might have looked at. It's, it's in your timeline. They're, they're advertising it. All of these companies, if you're looking at Google. Their, their parent company is Alphabet Company, right? And what they are is an advertisement company. Facebook, advertisement company, right? And when you go on you, you got to understand that's the second largest search engine um, right behind Google, which owns YouTube. So it's like, and they're all with the AdSense. They're all advertisement companies. So when you're thinking about it, it's like, damn, all these guys, all they really care about is getting to the money. I can't blame them, but we just have to protect ourselves and say, look, I'm not going to fall victim to these things. I'm going to be very conscious of what it is that I'm doing. And a lot of us are missing that. We don't usually behave consciously. Like we're just really going with the flow and being fluid and allowing things to happen and just jumping into a routine that you're guided by versus thinking outside of the box, challenging ideas. Don't just go with ideas. Sometimes you have to challenge ideas, create ideas, be innovative, and you'll stay sharp. And you, it'll be a lot harder for you. It's because your brain is a muscle too. You have to use it. If you're not using it and you're just allowing the world and society to control you, then you're just going to be mush out here and you'll just be another what they call now NPC, right? You don't want to be that. You, you want to be you want to be controller your own character you don't want to be controlled and it's very easy to be controlled because in the name of convenience we lose a lot well just because we want things to be convenient we want things to be easier we want when we start to search it finishes our search and that's cool but guess what it's directing you there um almost everything that we do we just go ahead and click these privacy thing like the tos we go ahead and click okay who reads it? I've sat down and read some of those things. And if you did, you'd be surprised as to what's in there. Cause it's, it's absurd. Some of the things that they are expecting us to agree to that we just agree to. So we can use this platform. So we won't be out of the loop. We won't be off the grid, you know, or, or whether it be FOMO or whatever is compelling us to be part of these things that are not necessarily good for us. If we don't use them well, it's just like how you said, like YouTube University. Um, what I when I bought my house, I didn't know how to change a toilet. I, I went to YouTube University. I was able to do it right away. Um, I work on my own cars, tuning, upgrading the dropped engines, and uh, hooked it up to computers. And I did every, almost anything on cars. Right, a lot of that stuff now I may not know how to do, but they'll have the specific directions for my specific model and all that and i can watch it if i miss something i back it up okay boom i need to get these tools i got these tools all right, i got it and most of the things that we learn you can learn anything on there man they've got people who learn how to kiss how to write a paper how to anything that you can think you can learn so don't get me wrong you don't have to get off of these platforms you just have to navigate to the things that are going to improve you as a person self-development you want to be better like they got great exercise programs that are free you can learn another language for free on some of these channels so there's so many things that, or learn how to travel like um anytime i'm about to go on a trip i look and i see places to go ahead of time there's so many things that you can do to better yourself and to make your life more convenient without uh being a, a drone out here you, you don't want to be a drone and that's that's the thing about it. So it's not to stay away from the platforms it's to use these platforms for improvement. Man, couldn't have said that any better. You know, I always say, bro, that in today's day and age, specifically in today's day and age, where there's so much information out there. And because there's so much information out there, ignorance is a choice. And I think that if you don't know something, you got to look in the mirror and realize that's actually your fault. You know what I'm saying? Because 
The information is literally in the palm of our hands. If you don't know something, you can literally put a question in the search engine. It'll lead you. You you have to have that self knowledge to be able to, like I said, I always say, discern. Right? You have to kind of be like, you have to understand what what you're looking for and what's going to feed what you're looking for, uh, what's going to help you in that moment, what 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 information you're looking for. But it's all out there for you. Sometimes you're gonna have to uh, <clears throat> you're gonna have to filter out a lot of things, weed out a lot of things, um, but it's there for you if you if you really want to learn something, you can do it. Like you said, man. I mean, you you didn't know how to replace the toilet, but there was a video on YouTube. I'm sure there's a few videos on YouTube. If you just spent the time to actually sit there, be present, and actually pay attention and learn it, it's a skill that you can learn. And I mean, I think it. And when you <clears throat> excuse me, when you approach life in that manner, in terms of just having a curiosity or just even having the, the willingness to try to, to fail, to experiment, um, that's how everything was brought about. If you think about it, just through, through, through uh, trial and error, man. I mean, the airplane, the Wright brothers, right? Nobody said they would be able to fly. And, and they, they didn't want to believe that. They didn't want to take that. They It took them however many times to finally get that thing up in the air and flying. But look at where we're at now, man. I mean, it's, it's crazy. So if you got a vision, especially in today's world, man, and you want to create something, there's so many resources for us to tap into to be able to bring that about in our lives, man. It's such a special time to be alive. I mean, we talked about this off air and we didn't really, we'll, we'll get into it now maybe, but perspective, bro. There's those people that can see the world's on fire right now. That that's all they see because of a lot of the things that they're being kind of uh, subjected to, you know, whether it be on social media or on the news platforms or wherever the case may be. People are feeling like the, the, the world's on fire right now. But there's others that can see from a different perspective, from a different set of lenses that, man, today there's so much opportunity. There's so many resources. There's all these different services and tools and all these different things that can help you elevate yourself and expand yourself and bring about that vision that you have for yourself and make you freaking successful and rich in this life, man. So it's like, bro, what are we doing? You know what I'm saying? Like, but I, I, I also get it from the other side of the coin, man, how addictive shit could be, right? Like you could easily, like I said, get lost in the sauce, man. And I understand how that can happen. That's why you got to be careful, man. You got to you got to be responsible as you navigate through these uh, through these spaces and uh, just be careful, man. And just just understand what's at stake here. Who's behind the veil? You know, who's kind of pulling the strings? And you kind of touched on it a little bit, man. Um, there's a lot of really, really intellectual, smart people that are doing like there's psychologists that understand the way the brain works, the way we as humans behave. And they're creating these new different they're, they're taking our data sharing it amongst each other through platforms it's kind of it can be a scary time too because all that information is out there there's there's a uh, there's not much privacy nowadays but again if you 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 can also look at it from the standpoint of like there's no better time right now to to elevate to uh to become smarter to to become more successful to improve yourself man so that's the way I look at it. And I can already tell that's the way you look at it too, man. So it's important for us to do this work, man. That's why I like, again, I'm super excited to have you on here, man. I wanted to ask you, bro, because um, one, of the re one of the original reasons why I wanted to get you on here was to talk about masculinity. Uh, I would say a, a good majority of your, your work is, is based in talking to young men, but you also mentioned uh, women pay attention to a lot of your, uh, your content as well. So I wanted to, I wanted to kind of dive a little deeper and ask you like, how did you get into this space so that it, it could provide some, some context to people and, and give us a little bit more of your story, bro, of like why this is important for you to do. Got it. Okay. So I'm gonna try to make, um, a lot of it quick, but it's a, it was a long the journey just to get to this point. And I feel like I'm not even done with um, half the journey, God willing. So 
I started out, the first thing that I did that was remotely related to anything that I do now was DJing, right? I had a lot of fun. I was actually good. Like I was sitting there putting the two turntables together, Technique 1200 spinning like I was DJ Scribble, all of that. I don't know if you remember that back in the day. Um, did house parties and uh, club events, different things like that. That was fun. Um, I ended up running into some like musical artists and stuff. So I managed artists and music producers back and they learned about that craft, learned about music a lot, studied, got into it and everything. Um, what happened after that was we decided, hey, you know what? Uh, we could do some type of film. I've always been interested in filming and I was always a writer. So I wanted to do scripts, but I realized no one would take me seriously. Like you throw a script out there right now, it's nearly impossible. It's going to be in a pile and it's probably not going to get there and it's going to get the way or rolling. Right. Um, so it, like the only way I could do this is to kind of execute it on our own. So all of the people who I had access to, I was like, listen, we're going to do this. And <laughs> we came up with a film and ended up getting like um, 4 million views on the channel. So it was like, oh, this is uh, pretty good. But it costs a lot of money to continue to do that. Um, so I kind of shifted gears. <clears throat> Got with um, somebody that I had met, one of the uh, one of my good peoples, and they were like, hey, look, we should, um, you know, I'm doing this podcast thing. Why don't you do your own show? I'm like, man, I don't even know what I want to talk about. So I was, um, I, I did a few different things. Like, you know, I listen, I'm into anything, space. I could sit here and talk to you about uh, Kepler 22B for like an hour and a half, right? <laughs> like, like I, I'm, I'm into that. I'm into like, uh, the sea, like we're to the point at the bottom where the fish um, aren't blind because it's so dark you can't see anything. I could tell you about um, technology, like what is the phone coming out next September, not this September. I could tell you about, um, you know, cars and what it, that why hydrogen power is what we should have been using instead of electric 10 years ago. Um, or, or I could talk about relationships. Or so there's so many different things I tried a lot. But I was compelled to talk about the um, relationships of human improvement. The reason I studied the relationship part of it so much is because I do believe that the nuclear family was the foundation of this country in particular and many others. So where you had a strong family. And if you look at the people with the most wealth, the people who are most successful, it's families, right? Even if you go to the most success, it's just families. They've mm -hmm. have um, lineages of, of, of uh, wealth and just a good structure and they help each other and community, right? So I think it starts in the home, this, right? And then you have your community and then society. So we can't have a good society. We, we have to get that foundation, which is in the home first. Mm -hmm. Now, if we can't get the relationship part of it down, then all of that other stuff is out the window because you don't have the foundation, in my opinion, right? We can, this um, hyper individualism, what we're experiencing right now is damaging society because ultimately it doesn't make anyone happier, right? Uh, you can get all the material things in the world. And I know a lot of people with those material things, it doesn't make them happy, right? It, we have these metrics right now of what we think is what success looks like, but it's really not. The most pe the people who are most fulfilled don't even have a lot of material things. The people who are most they're comfortable, and that's the thing is perspective, right? Um, where we are here, particularly in the West, we are not comfortable unless we're like rich, unless we have the latest J's, and, and and these are things that don't even matter. Having a luxury sedan, we feel like we're doing something once we get to that point, right? We feel like we have to have like a mini mansion at least, and, and there's so many things that we look for for comfort. But many of those things don't make you comfortable. I've seen people like and traveling. Sometimes you have to travel because when I do travel, I see people who are way happier with way less material things, but they don't have way less. Right. They have their family. They have the people who they love. They have their small circle, their big circle. And everyone's so happy, so fulfilled. And and their perspective, they are absolutely successful. And who are we to tell them different? Because. When it all when it's all said and done, we ain't taking none of that stuff with us. Are you leaving a legacy behind? Are you are you making a difference in society? That's what I feel like success looks like to me. To me is having your a positive impact on the world. And I feel like I'm equipped to help with that task. So I feel it's my civic duty 
to do that because if I have an ability and I'm not using it for the greater good, why do I deserve to be blessed with the ability? So it's important or if, if you can do it and you're, you know, your mind, body and soul are ready for what comes with it, then you absolutely do it. And perspective, I mentioned that word so much along with balance is because me having perspective is what I think helps me help other people because I can put myself in your shoes uh, and have that empathy. Like, okay, I get it. I know what you're doing is jacked up, but I, I understand why, where it's coming from. You probably mean well in your eyes, you might think this is right, but let me show you something. And I can tell you this way. And another thing that I feel like is important is a lot of dudes don't have patience to help other men. A lot of people get theirs and then they're like, pull yourself up by your bootstraps and all that. And that's cool. And I dig it. We should be masculine. We should be motivated to um, get ours naturally. But unfortunately, we all weren't equipped the same. And a lot of people don't understand. Like, if you can't play ball and I can, you just understand that, well, I'm not a baller, right? Um, this person is really good at math. This person is good at English. We're able to grasp that concept, right? We're, we're able to grasp the concept that some people are just geniuses and some people take longer to do it and they'll have a more difficult time doing it. But for some reason, when it comes to dealing with trauma, dealing with situations or even masculinity, we feel like every man is just supposed to inherently possess these traits. We don't understand that there's development and we were all equipped differently. Some of us had positive male role models. There's so many different factors genetically, right? Um, your environment so many different things contribute to masculinity that people don't understand and don't have the patience to, to say look this is how you do it so when i see people downing other men like oh like if you're if you're a, a, a person that does wrong to other people yeah there's no tolerance for that i will dog you right if you're intentionally doing things that are wrong to others that are affecting other people negatively then yes that's wrong but if you just don't have it maybe you don't have to juice it maybe you're timid you don't know how to uh how to press females and nothing like that. Okay, this is what you do differently, right? If you don't know how to get to the money, you want to get rich, you want to, um, or at least be able to provide for your family, but you just don't have the method. A lot of people um, don't know how to manage finances. A lot of people don't know how to raise their credit scores easily um, just because they didn't learn it. And sometimes when you watch some of these videos, there's a lot of grifters, right? That are just in there for the money to direct you in the wrong direction, to, right? And then some of them put paywalls in front of things. I don't really respect that. You're not, I mean, do what you do, get your money. But what I'm saying is that if you put a paywall behind anything that's valuable, do you, are you really out here to help people or are you really out here to help yourself? Why, if, if you're getting monetized already on a lot of these platforms, you're already comfortable. Why is it that you put paywalls behind everything valuable? Why? Are you really out here to help people? Or are you helping yourself? That's what I think when I, when I see that. So, you know, I understand time is money, but there's a balance between that. Cause some of these things are outrageous. Some of these prices are outrageous. Some of them are just not affordable. And if you're not already on that level, then you paying what some of these people are charging. is just not feasible for most. So I think we all should do our part to help others develop wherever they can right a lot of us don't pay our debt to society we're all in this like i said hyper individualism and that's that's one of the main issues we don't really help each other and we don't use that perspective we don't say look all right i understand you okay let's get this let's get this together i'm gonna get you right i'm gonna help you out i'm gonna put you on right and that's the type of people that i try to surround myself with i had a few people strong people who are like-minded and appreciate helping others also. And we even help and feed um, off of each other because we have that type of synergy because we're all, we all have a common goal. Like, okay, we want society to get better. I want, I want to start with the people around me. We're going to do that. And we're going to start building on this thing and helping others. And to me, that's the most important. Man, bravo, bro. I, I, I first of all, I got to say everything you just said was so powerful, so profound. And honestly, man, it, it's a breath of fresh air uh, because, I mean, I don't think people like yourself, myself and I, other people I know that are uh, intentionally doing this type of work. Uh, they don't get a lot of recognition and shine, especially in today's world, because, I mean, it, it ain't it ain't 
the most like you know what i'm saying like people aren't people aren't really looking for that you know people are looking for the next thing that's going to provide them instant stimulation and this and that and, and it, it takes work it takes intentionality it takes a, a, a lot of commitment and a lot of scrubbing and a lot a, a lot of different things it's going to take it, it takes having uncomfortable conversations it takes all these different things to to kind of arrive or not even arrive really just kind of begin to see life different than you've been seeing it for the rest of, for, for you know however long you've been seeing it like that but you said so many words within what you just said that i wanted to to kind of touch on man um you mentioned responsibility you were you mentioned fulfillment you mentioned happiness you mentioned purpose and i think that honestly bro um happy happy moments come with with fulfillment man you know what i'm saying and and in order to be fulfilled you have to be on purpose you have to be following your call your duty you know what i'm saying and like i think that also starts with knowledge of self man really getting to understand who you are it sounds to me bro like your whole process of kind of like starting from being a dj to being a producer to doing a whole bevy full of different things man you really you really found yourself and and you found what you you know your your you felt like your purpose is your calling is your responsibility is because you you've been blessed with that gift you know what i'm saying and you kind of touched on something too which is like not everyone's like a baller right not everyone's like a lebron james or something like that but this person could be good at math and bro if it's if we all kind of helped each other identify that within enough within one another bro our communities would be better our society would be better our world would be better and it would just expand outwards like that, man. But it also, it always begins with the self, right? Like that's why I think our work is so important because we're teaching others how to be their best selves. So recognize that, that light, that, that, that gift that they have within themselves in order to, to give that gift to the world, man. And then if we begin to get cohesive with it, just like you have like your crew, right? You guys got that synergetic energy, and you guys all are in alignment with what you are doing. You know what I'm saying? You have an understanding of like what you guys are looking to accomplish and 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 the goals that you have for yourselves and for the your surrounding environment. If we all did that, it, can you imagine, bro, if we all did that, if every single one of us, instead of criticizing, instead of judging other people, instead of belittling other people, right? Using that same energy and investing it back into ourselves in order to help those that actually are looking for help, man, can you imagine the domino effect that would have on our society, on our world, and how much better of a place and how much more of an enhanced experience we have of life, man? Because I can, I, I know, you know, call me an optimist if you want, but I believe that, man, there's so much opportunity out here for us to, and, and there's so much abundance for all of us to to, to live amazing existences out here. Nobody in this, especially in America, man, nobody should be starving, bro. Nobody should be homeless. But yet here we are, man. Um, and I understand corruption. I understand, you know, uh, poor leadership. I understand uh, all sorts of other things at play for sure. Um, that psychological warfare we're kind of talking about right now with, with the social media and things of that nature. So I understand. But that's why, bro, it's going to take people like yourself, people like the friends around you. Uh, people like myself, other people that I know that are doing the work that are going to have to help not only help ourselves, but help other people, man, in the process, man. And, you know, uh, it's going to take that, bro, because I firmly believe, bro, that God has given us gifts, man. Um, Jay-Z said this. I seen this uh, a quote a while ago. He's like, everybody, ha everybody has a specific in uh, genius in them, genius level talent in them. You know, it, it may not be you may not be the best ball player, but like you said, this person could could do could, is really good at math or this person uh, bakes cookies really well but you gotta you gotta understand who you are the natural gifts that you have and you gotta develop that and you gotta learn how to develop that more and more so that you can give those gifts to the world you can align with other people that are on the same mission on the same purpose as you and man the difference you can make is i mean it's infinite man it's, it's really limitless you know what i'm saying so yeah man kudos to you your crew for, for doing what you're doing, man. And, and you know, I, I'm happy to be standing alongside you, my brother. So I'll say this, right. Um, 
a lot of people don't know this about this guy, but um, it, let's say you took a, a look at like a guy who like Elon Musk, right? Which would be deemed one of the most successful people on the planet, right? Um, he started out at a, at a great disadvantage, right? And so he talks about it publicly where he says, you know, he has Asperger's, which they don't really call it that anymore. They just say he's on the uh, autistic spectrum. But if you think about it, if you're diagnosed with autism and then you become one of the most successful men in the world and one of the smartest people ever, it's like, wow. So you just can't really judge people because they might not be good at something. Sure, he's still socially awkward and things like that, but maybe that's not his purpose. His purpose is to innovate, right? And, and he's a genius in his own right. So we just have to understand just because someone may not get this, that doesn't mean they don't have a purpose. They just don't have a purpose that you know about. So I always encourage people to figure out what it is that they're passionate about. You got to find a passion, whatever it is that you like to do. And then you find a way to have a positive impact on the world and to monetize it because it's just as important because you have to make a living doing what it is that you do. So if you can double that, have that to where it's something that you're passionate about, something you enjoy doing, because a lot of times when you go into work for a place that just isn't fulfilling, it's not what you like to do, it's going to be tough for you. It's going to be tough getting up. You're always going to be thinking about calling out. You need mm -hmm. to be doing something that you're passionate about. I would say go for your passion first and find the most, uh, the, find, a, find a strategy on how you can be extremely successful at it. That's important. Yeah. Yeah, man. In today's day and age, man, I mean, there's so much room to to do whatever you want and be whoever you want to be in this life, man. And and there's resources available for you to, to help you develop. You know what I'm saying? So that's extremely important, man. And again, it's going to go back to knowledge yourself. And, and the only way to truly do that, man, to, to really understand about yourself is to free yourself from distractions from time to time, man. Be with yourself, man. Learn more about yourself. Learn more what you're interested in, man. What you to like what you said, what you're passionate about. And when you do that and you figure that out about you, man, make that commitment, man. You know what I'm saying? And just stick to it. I, I like you see it all the time. There's so many stories of there's so many people that we don't even know about that are doing that are in their own lane, just crushing it. You know what I'm saying? And it's natural to them. And, and you see it all the time, bro. And in today's space with the internet, man, I mean, there's almost no excuse not to not to uh, be successful, man. And that's what I'm understanding and I'm learning, man. So um, as I sit here and talk about it, man, it, it's also something I got to the advice I got to take myself, man. I got to get back on my grind. You and I both talked about it kind of off air. Like we about to just kick it into a new gear. I already know you. I see the new studio. We have to. <laughs> we have. Yeah. We have to. We gotta. We gotta. We gotta go hard, man. Um, I, I don't see it any other way. It's it's yeah. at the point right now where it's more difficult, right? Um, and I know you may have touched on a little bit earlier where it's just it's tough for men in particular because we don't have that same support system, right? There's nothing. The, the same resources are not available to men trying to get it right now not as easily right it's like you're discouraged to for being masculine at this point and that's that's a tough thing when you when they're telling you like hey nah this ain't it this ain't acceptable right we're supposed to we we, we need that testosterone to be more active and it's not because of um not only the dieting but what society is telling you is okay and it and the things that they're telling you are okay. Like they're saying, oh yeah, you like to play games all day? That's fine. You like to feel like that? Eh, it's okay. And it, it, it starts from when they're young. When they're young, they need to hear the right things. Like sometimes you just have to sit down with your son and tell him, nah, look, I understand you feel in a certain way, but there's a better way to deal with this pain. Things are going to happen, right? And this is what we're going to do. We're not going to lash out. Um, we understand if you if it's if it's something worth crying over, it is what it is. But we do that in private. <laughs> you know what I mean? We and we are supposed to be strong. We have to be strong. We're forced to be strong and we shouldn't have a problem with it. That's our duty. We're protectors. So we are supposed to be strong. It, it's necessary for us with all the dangers in the world. 
we have to be strong. We have to protect. So it should be encouraged. I don't think that how it's set up right now where they're discouraging men because men are necessary. We're an important piece of society. Um, the value of men has actually decreased dramatically. Uh, we're constantly told now that we're no longer needed. We're not necessary. We're getting picked up, pick, picked over by beers. And it's like, you know, you, I know you heard the whole thing about the beer. Would you pick a beer or a man to be locked in the forest and all the women were choosing the beer? As if the beer wouldn't rip you to shreds. I haven't like, heard. That. Yeah, there was a whole big thing. It was going viral where they had they were asking women, if you were in a forest, would you rather be picked? Would you rather be alone with a man or a beer? And they were all saying beer. Like, are, are we that much of a threat? Are we are we that bad? Or are y'all just trolling? Or do y'all really hate? Me? And we hear the word misogyny all the time, right? But we don't hear about misandry which has become acceptable right now. We're, it's, it's, we're seen as a threat. There's so bad, like, all right, so there's a new, there's an airline, first to do it, that actually gives you the option to not sit next to a man if, if you don't want to on a plane. This is what it's gotten to that. Like, oh, I just, I'll sit next to anything, just not a man. Sit me next to a dog. Sit me, not a man, though. I don't want to sit next to a man. Like, have we gotten to that point where we see men as such a threat, like we're and just useless and and just hated so much that it, it's gotten to that? Can a man choose not to sit next to a woman, or like, how how is this going? What are we doing? Why are we why are we so antagonized at this point? Um, and I understand that it's not the way. It, it was it's never going to be the olden days because yeah. women have proven to be able to be self-sufficient in many ways in many ways but not every way as far as um them being able to provide for themselves that has become more prominent but women have always worked a lot of people try to make it seem like there was a period in time where women didn't work ask your grandparents they worked they did work i'm trying to figure what period of time that there was where Women didn't work. Of course, we could talk about the oldest profession, right? So that automatically lets you know women were working, at least for that. Um, you've had uh, women who were flight attendants years and years ago. They used to call them stewardess, right? They changed the name for it. There are women who were actors. There are women who um, they had more feminine jobs, maybe, right? Where you, you wouldn't see many women bricklayers, which you still don't, uh, the hard labor ones. But women have always worked. How that looks like has certainly changed. Like you've seen uh, women get more desirable jobs where it's like, okay, I could be in an AC and uh, just pull the strings here and there. You see a lot more of that. Those are the ones that, those are the professions that women now generally fight for, right? They're not saying, hey, there's not enough women bricklayers, damn it. Hey, there's not enough women plumbers, damn it. We want to be we want equal rights in plumbing. No, you want equal rights in the easy jobs that require no manual labor. And that's fine, but don't say equal at that point. You have to say advantage woman or pro woman. Yeah, right? Like you because that's not equality because equality means that we're all doing the same thing. You don't want the same thing. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that, but just call it what it is. And I don't I, I believe in women's empowerment and I believe in the original version of feminism, whereas women should feel safe in any space, whereas women should be treated equally. But this at this point. It's now not good enough unless it's at the detriment of men, if it's at the exclusion of men. Right. And even I don't know if you ever like that. Remember that um, interview recently that was pretty much a dumpster fire with Donald Trump and it had Rachel Scott. It was the uh, black journalist convention where they were at, where they she, she was. She asked a really, really foul question. I'm like, OK, why? Why are there just three women there? I don't think that there had to be three men. But how about one man? Maybe two instead of just three women. Like, why? Why do we feel like we just have to have women? included in everything but exclude men at the same time 
Why do we need to do that? We don't need to do that. We don't. It doesn't have to be like that. At this point, we're looking to get a matriarch society, but it's never been proven to work at, an, at anywhere, ever. It's never been successful. And my main issue with it is that if it were going to work better, then I would say go ahead and do it. But women are not happier. Women are complaining more and more now. Mm. Mental health has went up um, for men and women alike. No one's happy with what's happening right now. You think women really want to do a whole bunch of work during the day and then are going to be able to be feminine afterward? No, it's, it's, it's not. Not when they have to place themselves in a masculine position all day. When you're forced to behave like that, it's not a light switch you can just turn off. There's very few women who have that ability because it's not natural for you to be in a masculine role all day and then expect it to be feminine for your man after that. That's a lot. That's a big ask. So I give women that. I understand that. But it's like, this is what it looks like. This is what feminine feminism looks like. Um, the economy now is designed for the only way you can really be comfortable or successful is to have two incomes, unfortunately. So the point where women didn't work anymore, that's probably gone away forever. Or at least in a foreseeable future, it ain't going to happen in our lifetime where we can just have it to where only men work. It's, that's not coming back. But what we have to look at is that I've seen some families that are able to pull it off. Whereas um, I could just go with mine. My mom, she she's always worked. My father always worked. But she still did a lot of other things. She still treated my father like a husband. She still gave him that respect and everything. So... I don't think that just because you're in a workplace that you have to now assume the male role because I've seen it work in other cultures. It works. This is not the only society where women work, but this is the, the Western Western civilization is where men are valued the least women are working in the East, but they still value their men. And that's, that's the main thing. It's just that, there's no feeling for us. There's there's no empathy. There's no no grace given. There's there's no understanding whatsoever. It's just the hell with them. We don't need them. They're trash. They're just men. And we're not supposed to be emotional wrecks, but it doesn't mean we have no feeling at all. It's not right. we do want to be cared about. We do want to be valued. It's important to us to be valued. That is me being valued. And I'm not going to say it's all because I have a beautiful wife who does value me. Right. But it's not that easy. Right. It's not that easy to find one. You're, it's like the diamond in the rough right now, because especially once you get to whereas, you know, mine's she's Generation X. Now you have um, millennials and then now um, Gen Z and Alpha. You can forget about it. They don't give a damn about no men. It, it's, it, it's gotten worse as we. Um, as as we get younger the generations as the generations turn up they're getting worse and worse and i think that there is <clears throat> i think that there is a solution and i can't i want to say insight because i think we're close to bottoming out um i think there are some women who are realizing what's going on in the early phases there are some men who certainly most most men realize that it's really bad it's extremely tough to get a date. It's extremely tough to get women to pay attention to you. And um, the demand is so much more right now for what's expected of men. You're expected to be six feet. You're expected to make six figures. You're expected to um, be charismatic, funny, intelligent. Um, like they want the Dosakis man. You know what I mean? Like you got to be like the most interesting man in the world. And I think one of the main contributors to that is social media opened up a can of worms. Um, one on the influence side, but worse yet, the amount of men that women have access to and the fact that women are overvalidated on a regular basis. Mm. I think that um, could be. And I can tell you, I have some women who are close friends. I've seen what their dating apps look like. I've seen, listen, celebrities can't compete with them. They, and they're, they're, they're decent. 
they're they're not bad looking at all. They they are right, but they 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 wouldn't be equivalent to a celebrity or a good looking celebrity. But they are dogging them when it comes to replies. I'm talking about hundreds, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of replies. Instagram, they getting attention from dudes all day. Hey, beautiful. Hey, sexy. Every single day, they get that validation. They don't even have to leave their house and they're getting validation every day. So when you have an abundance of men and you have men who are willing to fly you out um, to Dubai or New York City, it's difficult for them to understand where they where they are in the sexual marketplace. So they're going to think they're a dime because all of us as men or not all of us, a good portion, because I damn sure don't do it. I don't think you do either. But a good portion of us, far too many of us. Let the algorithm push. Once you start liking these women with these crazy bodies and, you know, who being sexual on social media and not really offering any value and you reward bad behavior, why would they change? If they wake up to a bunch of validation by over sexualizing themselves and we get and they get hits and hits and hits and be viral and likes and kissy faces and emojis and ache plants and all these things for for being a degenerate. Why would they change? Why would they value you? They're not going to value you because they got hundreds and hundreds of hits without even leaving their house today. They didn't even leave their house today and they're getting all that validation from social media. So, of course, it's going to overinflate their egos. But us as men have to stop contributing to it. We have to stop liking those pictures. We have to stop following those pages. We if we want to do anything about it, we it starts with us, because guess what? If we started giving attention to virtuous women, what do you think would happen? Women would become more virtuous because mm -hmm. they need the attention, right? And that's the whole thing about it. And I've seen some grifters try to do that, behaving as if they're virtuous women. But we could tell what's going on right. because then you look at their, their link. They got an OnlyFans. And I'm like, ah, you got an OnlyFans. I'm like, so you can't fall into that web. It's so dangerous out here. That's why it's so confusing. And, and rough for men to navigate through this because we have damn near everything working against us and people are monetizing sexuality, right? Only fans should never have existed, but they're, women are able to monetize their sexuality. Even on Instagram, you can monetize your sexuality. TikTok, you can monetize your sexuality. YouTube, you can monetize your sexuality. And men are the ones paying for it. If they were reliant on women only, none of those businesses would exist at all. We are spending about 90% of only like their revenue is generated by men. It's us. So if we protest these types of things and start to pay attention to people who are actually virtuous, do your, do your research, see what they really about. Check their Facebooks, check their circles, see what other women are their friends, see who they're following, see what those people are talking about. You have to do some forensic studies over here like this. this you got to really dig in sometimes. And it's unfortunate because it should be so easy. Um, some of the things that I think about that we just take for granted that other people didn't have to do. Maybe our grandparents didn't have to do strategies, dating strategies. Why is there such a thing as a dating strategy? Why should I have to strategize? If I like you, I approach you. If you like me, you let me know. It's like, wait, no, I can't hit them up right away. Is it too early? Are you calling up your, your favorite guru and asking him how soon, how soon should you call her after you got the number or wait, should I text her or wait, should I wait like three hours? Don't hit her back yet because she's going to think that I'm weird or a stalker or, you know what I mean? It's like, come on, man. Like if, if you, if you messing with the kid, mess with the kid, like, why do I have to strategize if we're going into a situation in good faith? If I like you, you like me, we should be able to just talk about things. We should be able to be forthcoming. It's a simple process, but we make it so difficult and it's frustrating because none of that stuff should exist. It's absurd to me that we have to have dating strategies and um, women have become so apprehensive when it comes to men because of and, I, and I'm not going to say that there aren't some serious weirdos out there, but. Right. That's not the majority of us. The majority of us are not criminals. The majority of us are not weirdos. The majority of us are not um, like abusive, and, and, but we're behaving like they are. Now, these women, 
the problem with I'm this, I'm gonna I'm a, I'm a bring it home with this. <laughs> There's so like there's the top ten percent of dudes, right? They have access to all the women because it's all right. So if you look at people who are six feet tall, right? What's that like? Um, four six feet or over is like um what fourteen and a half percent something like that. If you look at people who make over a hundred thousand, it's like seventeen percent something like that. Um, if you look at people who, and then that, once you do that, just put those two together. What do you think you end up with? Less than 10% of men that have both of those already. If those are your metrics, you have less than 10% of men. You've eliminated more than 90% of the pool. The rest of us are invisible just for looking for those two metrics alone. And then they expect you to be charismatic. Then they expect you to know how to deal with women. Then they expect you to, um, be able to take them out and give them time and be on your purpose miraculously. Like, it's like, how is this supposed to work? And then those guys, they're not going to have any time for you. I can tell you they're not going to have any time for you. Cause what I was out here doing my nonsense, um, when you get in it, man, you don't have time. If you on your purpose, that automatically kills a lot of it. And then once you start dealing with multiple women, it's like child support. You have to divide from the pot. So those dudes, they play in the field and all y'all females want that guy. And you know how hard he is to get. So you're giving him everything and he's giving you nothing because he has an abundance mindset because he knows you're going to be replaced next week, whether you're good, bad or ugly. So th these women get the ideas of how men are <clears throat> based on these dudes who have an abundance mindset. And I'm not trying to hate the player because I done did the nonsense before. So I understand it. I know now that, damn, I probably shouldn't have rolled like that because not just understanding the perspective and realize I was really messing up the ratio um, when I could have just been taking one person seriously. That's the ultimate goal. You really want to just, I mean, take a, one person seriously, build a legacy. I think that that's what most of us want. But if all these women are chasing those type of guys, those guys with the abundance mindset who have so much access to women, they're not going to put you in a pedestal. They're not going to treat you well. That guy that you kind of looked over, maybe he activated your ick somehow for some frivolous reason, or maybe he was just too short, or maybe you didn't like his fit or whatever, because women look for reasons to eliminate you. When you look at the dating apps and they have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, they eliminate men for anything. You could have one little thing wrong, anything, and they're going to eliminate you, eliminated possibly your potential husband, somebody who would have loved, cherished you and did the world for you. And you've eliminated him based on something frivolous. Meanwhile, you're looking at this one guy who the dating apps are what you have to understand. The dating apps work like the algorithm. They push certain dudes. Once they see that one dude is getting his off they continue to push him to other women they're not in the business of you having you delete the app even though one of these people one of those apps advertises the app to be deleted it's a lie because that kills your revenue you have shareholders and you can't tell your shareholders that you are really trying to make people delete this app stop it you're a liar don't and we don't believe you we know that the idea is for them to be on a vicious revolving cycle this is a cycle the, that the, keeps it's going. It's the new big pharma. It's the new big pharma. Bro. Yeah, exactly. They don't need a solution. They need the, uh, uh what, what do you call that? Like a, there ain't um, no money in, in, in healthy people, bro, in the cure. No, absolutely. No, no there's no, there's never been money in the cure. There's always money in like a temporary fix. Right. Right. It's just, it's a, it's a temporary remedy, but, but you, that's, you that's the same like, thing. It is the landscape undoubtedly ha has been changed is, is completely different. I mean, you you touched on it with you know back in the day, back in the more traditional days. You talked about your your your, your mom, dad, your grandparents, this, dad, the third, and it was way different now. They didn't have the internet, man. Things move so much faster nowadays. People have so much more access nowadays. There's all these different apps where you can meet up, and you know it's crazy, man. The landscape is just completely different nowadays. And I and I agree with you, bro, in terms of. Uh, why should we even have a strategy, man? So I used to get frustrated at that. I'm like, bro, like, you know, like that. It's just so annoying, bro. It should be simple. But at the end of the day, you got to have game in this life, right? Like, and that, that game could also be used in, in a various different manner of ways, man, right? Like in business and being savvy and how you operate through this world. So it's important in that regard. 
But I will say something. I, I want to touch on what you also uh, kind of touched on uh, when you were talking just now. You, you mentioned it's got to go. It, it's ba- it's got to go back to us, man. I mean, I, you tell me if you agree with what I'm about to say. Um, it's, it's I agree with what you're about to say. <laughs> it's it's men's fault that we're in this position, bro. Because because that's why it's even more important right now for us to bring back real masculinity. We got to bring that back, bro. Like real masculinity, not this toxic masculinity is bullshit. There's just people that are toxic, bro. Masculinity cannot be toxic, bro. A real masculine person, a real masculine man is operating from love because he wants to protect, provide. He wants to make you feel safe. He wants to build. He wants to create, right? But the but the toxicity comes from weak men. From 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 somebody that doesn't know how to properly be masculine, in my in my humble opinion, because what happens is now you're overvalidating these women, right? You're 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 spending all this money on them. You treat them. What what are you really getting in return aside from the the sexual favors that you're getting? You're not really. They're not really earning that. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, bro, like you're you're so freely giving of your resources because you're a weak man, and that gives other men a bad reputation. To the point where it's now being labeled toxic masculinity, which to me is ridiculous. I talked about it when we first kind of got on board here, where I just said, man, uh, there's nothing like it when you get the divine feminine and the sacred masculine as a cohesive, well-oiled machine, a unit, a a harmonic unit. And when you do that, special things happen in this life, man. That's the, the, the spirit. That's how you meet God, man. That's how you you elevate in this life, man. And, and you understand uh, it's just a beautiful thing. And, you know, I think I think in many ways society has lost sight of that. It's unfortunate. And we, we could sit here and talk all day about why we even think that is, man. You know, because uh, you and I both know, man, you eliminate the, the man from the picture. People are a lot more easier to control, man, to manipulate because they're, they're working more off of emotions. Us as men, I would say majority men, right? We are naturally uh, more in control of our emotions than women are. I, that's not as I don't I don't believe that to be a sexist thing to say. I I, I do believe that to be true. Just just how we're naturally uh, made as men, and and it's okay for women. Women women are. Look, I got to ask you this, man, Trev. Have you, and I'm sure you heard of this book, but have you read this book called uh, The Way of the Superior Man? No, that's on my short list, but I haven't I haven't touched that yet. Um, I did want to say that um, toxic masculinity is actually an oxymoron. Mm. Take that for a second. Mm. <laughs> that's actually an oxymoron. Because, uh, like you were saying here, like the nature of a man is to actually make sure he's good, his wife is good, his family is good. That's what we want to do ultimately. We want to protect. Um, it's just about getting to that point. And I understand that there are some outliers, right? But we have sure. to call it as such. They're outliers. This it's not the norm. Um, there's so many good things that happen. Uh, during the day for everyone, but what's highlighted is toxicity, right? That's what we always push to the forefront because it gets views, it goes viral, but no matter, no matter what aspect of your life, right? So I'll just put it like this. Most times that you, maybe you made a Yelp report or something like that, or now they do Google reviews. I do a lot of them. Um, and I'll say that most people are only compelled to report when something bad. bad happens, right. right? And that's that's what's always highlighted. People just ignore all of the good because things are bad. But you know what? There are a lot of successful relationships. A lot of people who I'm surrounded with are in good marriages or, you know, good relationships. So I can't say that it's all bad. I, but what I will say is there's far too many for us to really thrive as a society i think that we have to do some things about what's going on and it's absolutely worth addressing i want you to tell me a little bit about this book though it's an amazing book bro i mean i was introduced to this book um 
from Nipsey Hussle, one of my favorite people to walk this earth, man. You know, and I, I was actually, I really just got hip to Nipsey Hussle, you know, after he passed. You know, I'm not afraid to admit that. Oh, wow. I'm not okay. going to be somebody that's going to be like, oh, yeah, I've been on Nipsey Hussle ever since, blah, blah, blah. But, like, you know, a lot of his work made it to my uh, field of consumption uh, after he passed, bro. You know, because I understand. Oh, yeah. He, he was he was on it, man. He was getting it in, bro. Um, I, I understand. Like, was he was even getting into, like, the health foods and everything, yeah. right? Wasn't he? Um, Yes. Dr. Sebi, you know, uh, he was learning about that. He was he was doing a lot of amazing work in his community, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Before he got gunned down and, you know, his uh, his girl, uh, Lauren London, actually introduced him to this book. I mean, you think of you hear the title of the book, The Way of the Superior Man. That sounds like obviously a masculine book. Right. And it definitely dives deep into the, the topic of masculinity, but it does not. Uh, it does not ignore the importance of the divine feminine as well, you know, and the role and, and the, the connection it has to uh, the sacred masculine man, you know, and uh, the book itself, man, it, it breaks down so many things from a spiritual standpoint, bro, like that, what that, that can only help a man, bro. You know what I'm saying? You got to, the way I saw it, when I found out that Lauren London introduced this book to Nipsey Hussle, I was like, wow, that's that's interesting. So I instantly gravitated to it. I got super curious about it. So I picked it up, read it. I mean, I couldn't put the book down. It took me week, week and a half at best to to to, to read it for the first time. I read it twice now and uh, I listened to audio book from time to time just to kind of uh, dig for more, uh, mine for more gems, you know? And uh, it's just one of these books, man. It's, it's taught me how to be a man and taught me under, how to understand women more more so in, 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 a, in a, a more natural way, man, a way that I feel more organically drawn to, you know what I'm saying? Like innately drawn to versus like some of these gurus and stuff like that, which is like, I, you know, I, I, I listen to all sorts of different content, right? Um, but you know what? Through my own individual work that I put into myself, I've been able to learn to discern Discern is such a, a big word in my life, man. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm that's an important word. It, it, listen, this listen. The spirit of discernment is uh, sometimes the difference between life and death, right? Uh, it's like knowing when to fold them. It's like you can avoid that person from being in part of your life, or understanding that that person should be part of your life. It's it's so many things taking that that job like you're going to make some of the best and worst most impactful decisions in your life based on your level of discernment so that's a heavy word yeah it's it's one of my favorite words man but um i think the the way that you can strengthen your discernment man it, it, again it just goes back to self and uh you know i, I I'm a very introspective person at this phase in my life, man. You know, I, I take a lot of time on myself to to assess my situation, to evaluate my situation, and uh, and, and fine tune it, man. Refine it to the point where, you know, okay, what, how can how can I improve? I always believe that there's there's room for improvement, no matter how well you're doing. There's always room for improvement. We're we're all works in progress, right? You got to recognize where you're at and how you can get better. That's why I love the term that you coined. <laughs> human improvement man it's just amazing it's it's it's, it's, it's self-development you know what i'm saying and it's just like bro like we all have that capacity and that ability to do it but it requires you to embrace change it requires you to get uncomfortable with the uh to get comfortable with being uncomfortable you know what i'm saying and you're gonna have to do a lot of dirty work man to ultimately kind of understand this and then through through these kind of times and spaces then you're able to kind of craft all these skills you can you can develop these skills like discernment, like awareness, uh, and then you can learn so much more about yourself and how you can affect the world in a positive manner. And uh, man, going back to to the book, man, I, I strongly suggest it for any any man to listen to read. It's it's out there on YouTube. You can listen to it on audiobook if you don't like to read as well. You know what I mean? Um, just however you can. Oh, it's it's free. Yeah. You said on YouTube. Yes, oh sir. yeah, now I'm on it. I'm gonna be listening to that joint tomorrow. <laughs> yes, David Dita is, I'm gonna be on, I'm gonna be on two. I'm gonna be listening to it on two X 
tomorrow, yes. man. <laughs> I'm one of those guys, 2X. <laughs> that's, the dude, right? that's exactly the way to do it, man. You just absorb it, man. And like, there's no limit to how many times you need to listen to it or read it. You know what I'm saying? You could, if you miss something, you could always pick it up and read it or listen. Oh, to yeah, it. yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I like those, man. I'll put my earbuds on time, double speed. I'm in it. I'm on it. I'm with that, bro. And it, yeah, it's, it's definitely something I, I highly encourage, not even just men to, to read, you know what I'm saying? For those that are in relationships, you know what I'm saying? I think it'll help people build bridges back to one another to understand how important we are to one another. Rather yeah. than this divisiveness, this divisiveness state that we live in, man, it's, it, it's, it's really icky, bro. Like, damn, man. It, and it really, <laughs> my head. it really gets me shaking my head, bro. He all, said icky. <laughs> <laughs> we're all we're all human beings, man. We all we're all here for a reason, you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and we're being taught to hate each other. We're being taught to to judge each other, to tear each other down, bro. And that's specifically why I got into this space, man. Because it's like, bro, like, we don't need to be this way. Why are we at war with each other, man? There's no need for this, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, we live in a world where there's enough for all of us to to live and to flourish and to to enjoy this experience of life man but again call me optimist if you want because that's what i actually refer to myself as man i you know we talk about perspective i see things from that manner i try to see the beauty from from every perspective you know what i'm saying and i, I wish more people were able to kind of do that for themselves because we can you know it, it, it perspective means you choose to to see things the way you want to see them i mean you can Use that discernment to kind of pick and choose how you want to see things. You can look at the world like it's burning, like it's about to end, or you could look at all these opportunities. You know, some Trev nowadays, bro, I don't even use the word problem in my vocab no more, man. There's no problems in my, my life. It's only opportunities and challenges, bro. You know what I'm saying? There's an opportunity to learn. There's an opportunity to, to gain something. There's no problems, bro, because the, the more you kind of label it and title it as a problem, bro, you start to put this unnecessarily weight, unnecessary weight on yourself. And I think a lot of people do that to themselves unknowingly, right? They just continuously speak life into these so-called problems rather than looking at the opportunity. Adversity teaches you a lot in this life, man. And there's so much to gain from that. And if you just craft your mind to understanding that young man in particular, if y'all understand that shit, man, you change the game. You start to really unlock levels, and there's always a new level. And that's what makes the game fun, bro. You talked about NPCs, and, you know, we at the end of the day, we're just leveling up our character, man. You know what I'm saying? Every day is just trying to add new tools to the bag. You know what I'm saying? You live in this life like you in GTA, but also you're just trying to level up, man. You know, you're trying to just, just become a better person throughout the process of life, man. And uh, – when, I think when enough of us start to do that shit, man, the, the the effect that it can have, it can just reverberate through this whole world, man. And, you know, that's how I see it, bro. I, I feel like that's the way you see it, too, man. It's kind of like be the change you wish to see in the world. You you said it, man. It starts within the household. But it, I'd even go a step further. It starts with, with self. It starts with the individual. Then it starts in, and it, it expands outward into the household. Then it can expand outward into your community. And then so on and so forth, right? And it's just like, bro, if each one teach one, whoo, man, I don't think people understand the power in that, bro. Yeah, so you said something very important. You, you eliminated the word problem from your vocabulary. That's that's tight. Um, I heard something the other day. I wish I remember who said it because I would credit them. I did not make this up. But they said every um, situation that happens to you is either a blessing or a lesson. I'm like, ooh, that's... That's sound that yeah that's that's sharp right there so i'm like yeah that that to me kind of sounds similar to what you're saying like because if it didn't destroy you then you can come back from that stronger wiser more equipped to deal with those situations in the future and a lot of those things that you know some trials tribulations and hardships that we've been through um we don't understand the value in it so like in my lifetime earlier right so i a lot of people don't understand this they they probably thought i jumped out of the womb of mac and a lot of people say that other people <laughs> are like yeah nah man i was born pimping bro I won't. nah not at all yeah, i man. had no idea i had no idea what i was doing when i was younger um and i had the ugly duckling syndrome 
um, I'm arguably handsome now, but back in the day, <laughs> there's no argument. Just not handsome, right? I had to grow into my look right now. So, but what that did for me was it allowed me to develop game, um, which, you know, you, you kind of have to have as unfortunate as it is, but you learn how to, you learn different things. You learn what women appreciate, what women don't. Um, and you learn to work on yourself because the one thing I did appreciate was that I didn't just say blame all women and become like black pill and like, you know, right. I just said, all right, there are men who were successful. I need to understand what it is that they're doing that I'm not doing to get better. And this happened like, I guess like high school years or whatever, just me developing myself and understanding like, okay, this is how you talk to them. This is what they like. This is what they don't like. Okay. I got to change the way I'm wearing my gear, right? Like a, a lot of different things that I just like, okay, I, it's, you just have to be more appealing. You have to um, be more confident. Women are attracted to confidence and competence, mm. right? So those are two confidence and competence. If you don't have those, then yeah, you're going to be in trouble. So you, but one, they kind of go hand in hand. Once you have the competence, uh, you'll likely become more confident because you're going to know whether you can do it or not. And if you can do it, yeah, that confidence comes easy. So those are those are some of the things that it's important to work on. It's nothing wrong with being uh, just just studying. I would say read more, read different things, um, have more experiences to talk about, because a lot of times it doesn't really take game per se, because um, I didn't use a lot of game when I became extremely successful. What I did was I just would talk to women. And because you had more information, you had a, a wealth of knowledge, they would appreciate that because women do love to learn from you. And if you're a good listener on top of it, then it's like, damn, you, uh, <laughs> you in a building. So the one other thing that I know that I gained from that, that I appreciate the most of actually sucking as a man, it was perspective. So I have the ability to not judge a man who is not there yet because I remember the time where I was not there yet and how I had to navigate and how it was a struggle and it was something that I had to work at. And I also realized that people won't grasp that concept as easy, but I can tell you at least I've been on both sides of it. No success to uber success. And I can tell you how to navigate that. And it's, a, it's all in, about how serious you take yourself and how serious you take life because I pretty much was trash in most aspects of my life until I decided to take control of it and say, look, now nah, I'm going to just start. I'm going to start getting mine. I, and one day the light came on and it was like, you know what, man, I'm about to switch it up. Mm. And I did. But once you start to, it's a frame of mind, right? I started saving money because of the frame of mind. It's not just like, okay, I'm going to spend less. I'm going to learn how to make money faster. I'm going to learn how to save and not, and, and also not to waste. It becomes a frame of mind. Something as simple as that. When you're trying to get your coins up, you attack it from every angle. You learn how to invest and save and spend less and generate more money. It's the same thing. What happens in your life? You're like, okay, I'm going to take care of my body. I'm going to be on a calorie deficit if I'm overweight. I'm going to eat better things. I'm going to drink more water. I'm going to exercise. I'm going to get more rest. I'm going to build my mind. I'm going to get more knowledge. I'm going to be more disciplined. And once you start getting that discipline and that drive to be disciplined, that's like the word that will help you in life the most as a man is discipline. Damn. If you want, if you want development, discipline is the way to go because discipline is going to um, determine how well you eat. Discipline is going to be how well you exercise. Discipline is going to be how well, how much you work, how how willing you are to put in the work about getting up and doing it a day that you don't feel like it. That discipline is going to have you disciplined with your spending and figuring out innovative ways to make more. So once you get a grasp on discipline uh, and um, you study that a bit and you just get the frame of mind of you, how you to know, be disciplined. You know what's crazy, Trev, bro? We, we've gone an hour and a half on this conversation and talking about men and, and, you know, how we, you know, masculinity and how we can be better. In our, and that's the first time we either of us said, said discipline, man. I, I can't believe it took us this long. To, I think 
I think that's because both you and I understand that, man. But I think we need to say that as well. We need to remind folks. Yes, absolutely. Because there's some, I'm sure there's some people who, um, might need to hear it. Yeah. Right. I'm, I'm hoping there's some young brothers who this is going to fall in their lap or the algorithm pushes it to some, some young, some young men, or even young women who would just be able to, because a lot of women will watch this because they just want to see where we are. Where's our perspective? How do we really feel? Right. Cause a lot of women actually think we hate them too. So, but that's not the case. We just, no. we just want things to go smoothly. Right. Um, but it's a protest going on right now. There's a lot of dudes that are opting out that are passporting and like, you know, the passport bro movement and all that. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, at one point I actually had no respect for it because I felt like they were going to play for the minor leagues. In a, in a sense, um, I talked to like a dude who was a, a I guess, extreme advocate of, of it. He explained it to me and I was like, you know what, man, I kind of get it. And I still don't encourage it like that per se, but I understand it because it's like you get so much static here. And when you get on that plane and then you go to the other place and you're like, wait a minute, the expectations are not nearly as great. You mean I don't have to be six feet? You mean I don't have to be, uh, I don't have to make six figures? You mean I just have to have decent conversation and you be attracted to me and I'm good? That's it? And you're going to treat me well and value me? And we can value each other? Like, And I don't have to work and I don't have to play games and you don't have to, I don't have to wait three days to call you and I can just talk to you like a normal person? Well, damn. <laughs> what am I going to come back for <laughs> and then play on very hard pause? But yeah, why would I, why would I change the levels of the game? <laughs> why would I change the levels of the game from easy mode all the way to like, um, what do they call it? Recruit or then what's, what's the other one? Veteran or whatever. Why would I change the level all the way to pro and the reward is the same? Why would I change? Why would I play on the most extreme you mode know, you know and I don't get anything that, more for it? What, what I say to that is to each their own. But to me personally, yeah, man, I mean, true. it's just kind of running away from the from the the challenge. You know what I'm saying? Because I think this is a challenge, man. We we, we do live in a, a completely okay. different landscape. But for me, I'm looking at it as like, oh, it's challenging me to be a better man. It's challenging me to elevate myself because the game is different now. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to necessarily – go down to that level to to kind of play ally to to these women so that I can get some, you know what I'm saying? But like, you know how some kind of weak beta males do and shit like that. But like I'm I'm going to I'm going to elevate myself. I'm going to put myself in that top percentage of men of people in general, you know what I'm saying, to to now open up more options to myself. And you know what you said, man, like we we talk about game over here, bro. You talk about confidence and confidence, competence. But you know what, bro? It doesn't even just necessarily have to be applied to women in, in, in the field. Bro, that them same skills are applicable in business, in networking, in leadership, in, in understanding human psychology and how you move in this world, bro. Like I'm talking about like it's a it's a necessary skill in sales. I'm talking about, bro, this this type of this type of skill right there, if you develop it and you become sharp enough. And adequate enough in this with this with this skill, bro. Like you could really elevate yourself to to new levels. Your whole experience of this game of life, man, changes, man. You know what I'm saying? And I see that, man, and I understand the level I'm at right now. That's why I get excited about the work, Trev. I get excited about like, yeah, bro. I I, I know where I'm deficient at still. You know what I'm saying? And what I can, what I, you you kind of talked about it right now. You know where where you kind of reached a point. Where you're like, nah, man, I'm just about to get mine. And I think it takes a certain point for some people to kind of just get sick and tired of being sick and tired and be like, nah, bro, this ain't it. I'm going to have to make this switch. I'm going to have to make this switch up and, and really level up. And I'm going to show them what's up. And sometimes it takes that motivation to do so, you know what I'm saying? But once you once you get on path to doing that and you start to see progress and results in your life, bro, Oh man, the game really just changes for you. It gets more fun. I mean, I'm at a level right now, bro, where like I, like I know the work ahead of me and that I'm doing right now, and I get excited that things can continuously keep getting better because 
it's that's really what it's going to lead to. You know what I'm saying? It's like the more work you put in, the more results you're going to get, the more it's going to get better for you. And this life really just becomes more fun that way, bro. So, you know, young men, young women out there, man, just just really you got to stop paying it too much attention to all this shit on social media because I mean, the real world ain't all like that. You know what I'm saying? Like you there's still there's still possibilities and opportunities for you to you know connect organically with people you know what i'm saying i i haven't used the dating app for years bro i was on it for a little bit but i was like man this is some bullshit bro i had my fun i had my time with it and this that and the third but like, that's some bullshit bro and then like i'm keeping a kind of eye on it i'm keeping tabs on it from a distance but i'm like yeah i don't want nothing to do with that space i literally want nothing to do with that space i'm not even with the dming and all that shit man like when I meet a when I meet a shorty, man, it, it's gonna be in a grocery store or like, you know what I'm saying, somewhere organically where like there's an opportunity to actually have conversation. And you can feel the energy. Like you feel if like somebody's attracted to you, if y'all make eye contact, that might be your opportunity to go and say something. You know what I'm saying? So like, you know, I think we've uh we've tuned a lot of that out. You know what I'm saying? Uh not me per se, I know not you per se. Yeah. But, so you know, so you are here Whole Foods macking, bro? <laughs> so yo you know what you, you know what i talk about that too that's one thing um when you're doing that i say that's probably like the better ones don't go to like your and not, i'm not saying don't shop at these places because all the and all that they got some some just but like when you go to like whole foods and stuff you're talking about people who care about their body right people wow. who ain't who are willing to spend that little extra bread to to make sure that they are taking care of their temple so yeah, go to the the um the supermarkets that have the really good food. That I tell people the supermarket is what's up, and it's easy to start a conversation, especially about those type of products. The one thing that you mentioned, um, it, that it kind of when you said the competence and uh, confidence, right? So I think that's, and it also goes to the discipline as well, like what we were saying with that. Once you start to, you never really have to chase women, and I never tell men to, but I say this. Once you start to improve yourself as a man and make sure that you are right in all avenues, just as human improvement, self-development, when you're doing that, they going to get in your way. These women get in your way because they know what you're about. They like, oh, I need to I need a part of that. He's that guy. So the more more magnetic. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, And that's the most important thing. You never people who really get it out here. They realize they don't have to do the only your only task at that point is to have decent conversation to where you don't turn a woman off. Right. And that's it. But in all honesty, if you just talk to them regular and turn off the Mackin, like where, you know, you try to forget the pickup lines, forget the trying to impress. Just talk to them normal. That You'll find that you set the tempo. Once they realize that you one of them guys, you're going to teach them what a dope a fly guy is supposed to be like. It's not going to be their preconceived idea. You're going to give them something fresh, like, "Oh wow, this dude, and he don't care. He and he just he just out here. He, yeah, I, I'm I'm taking this. I promise you. Just improve yourself as a man. You're gonna have your pick of the litter. Um, and it sounds it's a lot easier said than done. We understand that, but you should be improving your lifestyle. You should be becoming more disciplined. You should be. You should improve your drive, improve your dedication for things that you are passionate about and being successful at whatever it is that you're doing by default. You should always want to appear the best that you can. You don't have to spend a lot of money on anything, but look the best that you can. Groom yourself the best that you can. Um, just be as as presentable as possible. Um, read more. Study more. Your vocabulary is going to increase by default once you start digging into it. you are. I'm sure you know that. You keep you read more and your vocabulary increases. There's just nothing that you can say about that. That's going to happen. Um, talk to more people. You'll gain more perspectives. You'll have better understandings of things. Because I learned a lot from other people. I've I've learned a lot from this conversation just just now by itself. The more I talk to people, the more I learn because I take these different perspectives and I run with it. You already gave me a good book to read, so guess what? I'm going to learn even more. So it's it's that's all I'm saying. Talk to a lot of your homies. You'll get better for when you do talk to ladies right and that's it you don't have to chase nothing i promise you you get your weight up not in a f- physical sense unless you're like a skinny guy but when i say get your weight up y'all know what i'm talking about get right get your get your uh <laughs> yeah it, get, improve Level become up. more disciplined and these yes unlock levels bro unlock that next level and i promise you 
they gonna get in your way. You're yes, gonna be sir. fighting them off. <laughs> I mean, Promise ultimately, you. Ultimately, what you just described, what we're talking about right now, not to turn this into a hippy dippy spiritual type of conversation, but that's really the law of attraction right there, bro. Is if you if you just work on yourself, you ain't gotta chase nothing, man. The, the, when you're chasing something, you're actually kind of pushing it away. You know what I'm saying? But like if you work on yourself. And you level up in all these different aspects that you touched on, your physical appearance, you know, by getting in the gym, your uh, ability to articulate things by reading, by working out that mental muscle, right? Um, doing things through repeti repetition, uh, keeping promises to yourself, working on yourself through discipline, even on those days where you don't want to work on yourself or where you want to feel lazy. It's a lot easier to just stay in bed and do things like that on those days when you're putting in the work and you're leveling up you be instantly become more attractive, more magnetic. So you ain't really got to do much, but show up. You know what I'm saying? And then when you show up, bro, I mean, you, you're a different, more elevated version of yourself. And trust me, man, people, people can sense it, man. People can pick up on vibes and people can detect somebody who's confident. You know what I'm saying? And when, if you that dude, you that dude. I they mean, know. They, they know. <laughs> Come on, man. That's really what it's about. They understood. Man. But, yeah, but you know what, man, Trev, bro? You know, I appreciate you spending the time on here with me, my brother, man. For real talk, man. I appreciate you having me, for real, for real. Before we get up out of here, man, you know what I'm saying? I, I want you to just uh, feel free to take this time to say whatever you want to say, wrap up some thoughts, and, you know, leave us with uh, something, to, something to part ways with. Okay, cool. So what I say is just try to be a positive energy. Try to be a positive light in someone else's life whenever you can. It's definitely important to um, not only contribute to yourself, but contribute to society and try to just improve. It starts with yourself at first, for sure, right? That's where it begins. You improve yourself. And anybody who you see along the way, that you can help improve as long as it doesn't take away from you. We're never telling you to do anything that's at the detriment of yourself. If you don't have to just take the time that you have, that you have in excess and you use it to do something positive, you'll feel a lot better. You'll, um, and just self-development, man. I can't stress that enough. It's like, and it's contagious. Be careful about the people you have around you in real life and social media. I'm repeating that because it's important. And in social media, because you are suggested things by friends group and what they like. Um, so just be careful how it is. And if people keep sharing you nonsense, negative things that um, isn't helping you get through your path, let right. that thing go, man. You know what I mean? Like, just take it easy. Try to do some positive contributions to society and um, be conscious of everything that you're doing. Start being more analytical. Don't just be out here uh, as part of the matrix and then just going with the flow. Challenge ideas. Ask questions. Right. And you're going to you, you'll find that you'll start to learn a lot more. You'll move a lot better. You'll start exercising at the sermon that we talked about. And you're going to be better off. Anybody looking for me, man, um, he'll probably put a lot of this in the description. But as you see it on the screen right here. Uh, Trev Smooth. You can find me on YouTube that way. You can find me on Instagram that way. Um twitter or x now um tiktok instagram everything if you search that you'll find me it just you know trev underscore s-m-o-o-v-e and i'm working on some new things um i haven't mentioned it publicly yet but i'll i'll, I'll give it i'll give it to you now i have a new studio and it's about to be crazy so look out for some episodes on there definitely appreciate you having me though for real for real Yes, sir, brother. I appreciate the time. I appreciate everything you brought to the table out here, man. I learned a lot. I'm sure anybody who's going to consume this episode is going to learn a lot, man. And it was a fun discussion. It was a necessary discussion. And man, man, I salute you, my brother. Just keep doing what you're doing, man. Let's keep leveling up, man. Unlocking levels, baby. To the moon. You are ready. Peace, y'all.